Hey guys, welcome back to OGL Dev. Today I'd like to continue the implementation of the camera that we saw in the previous episode, the uh, UVN uh, camera model. And uh, basically we have uh, three goals for today. Okay, so uh, the first goal would be to create a proper uh, camera class that will encapsulate all the, uh, the camera related uh, functionality there. And this will make us uh, make the code uh, much uh, cleaner and uh, in general will make the code much more uh, reusable as we go forward. Now the second goal would be to connect this camera class to the keyboard, uh, which will enable us to, uh, to move the camera or the viewer inside our uh, 3D world. And the third and final goal is to do a general cleanup of all the matrices that we have. For example, right here in the code from the previous uh, tutorial, we have all these matrices that are manually created right here. So um, uh, we want to take care of all that. So instead of all this clutter, in the new code, we have just uh, something like, I think, uh, seven lines of code that replace uh, everything in the previous uh, in the previous code. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. And here we have an object called the cube world transform, uh, which is of the world trans uh, class. So this class encapsulates all the transformations that are involved in the transition of an object from its uh, local coordinate system to the world coordinate system. And uh, the implementation or the uh, the declaration of uh, of this class is in uh, world transform.h. Now a general note about all the new files in this tutorial is that they are located in the current uh, directory of the tutorial. Okay. So you go to OGL dev slash tutorial 14 underscore uh, YouTube. And the idea here is to basically give you a snapshot of the code uh, in its state for the current uh, tutorial. So if we make changes to some of these files in the next tutorial, you'll be able to compare the two revisions and see the changes uh, much more uh, easily. Okay, so let's see the declaration of the world trans class. And we can see that we have three private attributes. The first one is for the uh, scaling. Now I've used a floating point variable here instead of a vector that will allow you to do non-uniform Scaling. So I, I thought that uh, uniform scaling uh, for now uh, is okay. Of course, you can change it if you want. And it is initialized to one. So we start with no scaling. In addition to that, we have a vector uh, of three floating points, uh, vector 3f for the rotation. And finally, we have uh, another vector for the position in the 3D world. Now, the general idea behind this class is to decouple the world transformation of a mesh from the mesh class itself. Now, we still don't have a proper uh, mesh class, but we will soon have one. And instead of having all these attributes directly inside your mesh, you can separate them to a different class uh, like this one. And this is all you need in order to generate the world transformation. You can you don't need all the uh, the vertices, uh, all the buffers for the indices and the vertices, so you can keep uh, these two uh, enti entities uh, separated. Now we have several functions in the public uh, section. So first we have an empty uh, constructor. Next we have three setter functions for the scale, rotation, and position. Uh, and in addition to that, we have a rotate function. Now the difference between set rotation and rotate um, Let's wait for a second. When we go to the uh, to the implementation of the class, it will become uh, uh, much clearer. And finally, we have get matrix, which is the core service that this class provides. So this function generates the final world transformation by matrix by combining all the uh, all the three transformations together. So now let's go to the implementation of the class in uh, world transform CPP. First, we have uh, the three setters that are uh, very uh, self-explanatory, set scale, set rotation, set position. And here we have rotate. And the difference between rotate and set rotation is that set rotation sets the rotation on absolute values. Okay, so you provide the rotation in degrees 
and then you simply copy them into the rotation uh, attribute. While rotate changes the current rotation by the values that you provide, okay? So this is for absolute values and this is for relative values. And this helps us maintain the current rotation state of the object. So instead of the ugly static variable that we had in all the last few tutorials right here, this static variable scale that we used to uh, increment, and then we created the rotation uh, matrix uh, using this variable, we simply use the world trans class in order to maintain all the uh, all these attributes of the object. Now I didn't create similar functions for uh, position and scaling, I mean relative uh, functions, simply because I'm not using these in this tutorial, but uh, as soon as uh, we'll need them, then uh, I'll add them. And finally we have the get matrix function, which creates three matrices for scale, rotation, and translation, and initializes them by calling functions from the matrix for F class, okay? So instead of manually setting them as we've done before, for example, right here, we're using functions that are defined in the matrix for F class. This file is part of the include folder, so it's more of a general purpose, and we have several init functions here. For example, we can initialize the matrix for a scaling transform, or rotate transform, another rotation transform. This one is based on uh, quaternion. So, uh, spoiler alert, we're going to talk about quaternions in the uh, next uh, video. It's going to be fascinating, believe me. And as well as all the other uh, transformation, translation, camera, perspective, uh, projection. The implementation of these functions are in math3d.cpp. Uh, and you should be familiar with this code it's the same code for initializing uh, transformation matrices as we've been uh, using in the past uh, few tutorials, okay? So back to the get matrix function in the world transform class, we're initializing uh, the three matrices and we combine them together to create the final world uh, transformation matrix. And this is done by first applying a scale, then rotation, and then a translation. Okay, so all this is familiar to you. And finally, we return uh, the world transformation matrix. Now you'll notice that I'm actually copying the entire, the entire matrix back to the color, but I think that this is just, uh, you know, 16 floating points. So in the case of uh, these kind of tutorials, this, this is just educational code, so it is okay. In a real application, if you find that this uh, operation uh, costs a lot of uh, CPU cycles, then it should be very uh, easy to, to optimize. So now let's go back to the render function and see how we use this, this class. And here we have the cube world transform object of the world trans uh, class. Now this is declared in the global section. Um, I know it's not the recommended way of working. I'll probably change this into a, a proper application class at some point, but for now it is okay. We are setting the position to be two units uh, along the positive uh, z-axis and we're rotating uh, on every call to the render function we're rotating the cube by one degree. And then this is the relative function. So it maintains uh, the state of, uh, of the rotation and it is uh, incremented inside uh, this object. And finally, we get the world transformation matrix by calling get matrix. Okay, so we are done with this part. Next, we handle the camera, and this is where stuff becomes a bit more uh, interesting. We have a game camera here, which is also declared in the global section, and I've created uh, a camera class for that. So let's see it in camera.h, also in the same uh, folder as the tutorial. So we have four attributes here in the private section. We have the position of the camera in the world coordinate system, the target vector, which is where the camera is uh, looking at. This is the direction that the camera is pointing. And this is aligned with the, this corresponds to the N vector in the UVN uh, model. Uh, the up vector is aligned with the V in uh, UVN, and we don't have a U because we're going to calculate it on the fly. 
and we have the speed of the camera in floating point. So this basically allows us to scale the speed of the camera up or down, make it go faster or slower, and it is initialized to one. Now in the global section, we have four functions. First, we have the constructor, which is very simple, doesn't take any arguments. Then we have set position that sets the position in the 3D world of the camera. Next, we have a callback function to handle the keyboard. Okay, so the application captures uh, all the keyboard clicks and delivers them here. And then the camera has an opportunity to check whether the key is relevant for the, uh, for the camera. For example, if, it, uh, if it's left or right, up or down and the change the internal state of, uh, of the camera. And finally, we have a get matrix function that works exactly the same as what we saw in the world trans class. Okay, so now let's see the implementation of the camera in camera CPP. So the camera is initialized at the origin in terms of the position and the target vector points to the uh, positive z-axis and the up vector is aligned with the y-axis of the world coordinate system. Set position is very simple. We just need to copy the arguments into the position vector. Next comes the on keyboard callback function, which uh, receives the key as an unsigned char. And what we have here is a big switch statement. And these enums are defined in uh, freeglat underscore std.h inside the OGL dev slash include slash gl folder. So if you haven't installed freeglat yourself, you can use uh, this file. So when the user presses the up key, what we want to do is to move the camera along the target vector. Okay, so whatever the camera is pointing at, this is the this is the vector that it will travel along. We take the target vector and we scale it up or down based on the value in the speed variable and we add this to the position. Okay, so if we press up, we go forward. And if we press down, we go backward by subtracting the same thing from the position. Next comes the handling of the left and right keys. And what we want to do is what is called the strafing in a first person shooter. So we want the camera to kind of move left or right, but still point to the same direction. So in order to do that, we perform a cross product of the target vector with the up vector. Cross product is an operation that takes uh, two vectors and generates a vector which is uh, perpendicular to them. Now people always get confused whether the, uh, the vector will point this way or the other way. So for example, if we have two vectors, the question is whether it will go like this or like that. And the solution is to realize that we're working in a, what is called a left-hand coordinate system. So the positive z-axis points into the scene and the negative z-axis points kind of like uh, at the back of the viewer rather than a right-handed coordinate system where it is reversed. Okay, so negative goes forward and uh, positive goes backward. And in this case, when you are in working in a left-hand coordinate system, you use the, uh, the left-hand rule. Okay, so if you take your left hand like that, and this is your target vector, and you're doing a cross product with this vector, that uh, the up vector, so it goes from uh, this vector to this vector, then you're going, the, the, the vector that is generated by the cross product will point to the this way, which is for us, it's called the left. And down below here for the right case, we're reversing the order, okay? So first we're doing, uh, we'll take the up vector and we're doing a cross product with the target and this will point to the right. After performing the cross product, it's best to uh, normalize the vector. I mean, um, this operation is redundant if you know that the target and the up vector, the two vectors that are involved in the cross product operation, uh, if they are unit vectors, that is their length or their magnitude is one. In this case, we note that we know that the left vector will also be unit vector. But um, I always prefer to do to do the normalization after a cross product because you never know when you'll get to a case when the two pro the two vectors are not uh, unit vectors. So after we normalize it we scale it up or down according using the speed variable, and then we add that to the position. 
Now the handling of the right arrow is exactly the same. We just need to reverse the order of the cross product. Then we get the right vector. We normalize it, scale it, and add it to the position. In addition to the four arrow keys, we also use the page up and page down to kind of like make the camera as a helicopter. So it goes up and down, but stays in the same location. So what we do is we add the speed to the Y in the case of a page, uh, page up. So this uh, uh, makes the camera uh, higher or we decrease it by M speed and makes make the camera lower. And finally, we have plus and minus that control the speed of the camera. So we were able to, uh, to increase the speed or decrease it by one tenth. And in the case of a minus, I want to have a minimum speed of one tenth so that the camera never stops if you press minus too much. Finally, we have the gate matrix function, which is very simple. We create a camera transformation matrix here and we use uh, init camera transform function of the matrix uh, 4F class. Okay, so this function takes the position, the target, and the up vector. And here we're initializing the n vector of the, the UVN model according to the target uh, vector. And again, we normalize it just in case. Next, we initialize the U vector by doing a cross product of the up vector with the uh, n vector, uh, basically the target. So this is very similar to what we saw earlier for generating the right vector. Okay, so if we have uh, the n, the target, uh, the up vector, and we are doing a cross product by first going with the up and then the n, we're getting the right vector, which is u. Next comes the initialization of the v vector in the uvn, and this deserves a bit of, uh, of an explanation. Let's say that the target vector points uh, upward, something like that. Let's see that we're using the mouse, what we'll do in the next uh, tutorial, and we're pointing the camera upward, but the up vector is still pointing directly upward, okay? So they are not perpendicular to each other. So first we perform a cross product of the up and the target to get the U. And then we do another cross product in, in order to generate the V. So now the V will point back and we're getting three vectors that are perpendicular to each other. I hope, I hope you can see that. Now that we've calculated the UVN vectors, we can simply initialize the transformation matrix for the camera as we've done in the previous tutorial. Okay, so we have the, the U here, V and N in columns, and we have the position in the negative at the right hand column to move the camera back to the origin. Okay, so you should be familiar with this stuff. Now let's go back to the camera, and all we need to do is to return this uh, matrix back to the caller. Back in the render function, we can see that all we need to do is to call get matrix on the game camera object in order to get the view transformation. Now, in order to handle the keyboard, we have to register two callback functions in GLAT, and we do this right here. We call GLAT keyboard function and GLAT special function. The difference between these two is that keyboard func handles a uh, regular keyboard click such as uh, numbers and letters and special func handles uh, special keys such as page up and page down and arrows. But in our case, they are both implemented in exactly the same way by calling on keyboard function of the game camera and passing in the key. Now the signature of these two functions is almost the same. I mean, they both take the location of the mouse Right now we're not using it. We'll start using that in the next uh, tutorial. And they take the key in the first parameter. So in the case of keyboard, it is an unsigned char. In the case of special keyboard, it is an int. And you can see in the documentation that it, it is indeed like that. Okay, keyboard func takes uh, unsigned char and special func takes an integer. Okay, and this one you can see handles all the, uh, the function keys, the arrows, up and down, home end, insert, and uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So this is how the keyboard clicks are being delivered to the camera. Last but uh, not least, we have the projection matrix. 
And again, we use a function from the matrix 4F class in it perspective projection transform in order to uh, generate this matrix. Okay, so this function takes in a structure which I defined in the global section right here. And this structure contains five attributes. Okay, so we have the field of view, the width of the window, the height of the window, Z near and Z far. And they are defined right here, so it will be uh, easier for you to read. The implementation of this function, init perspective projection transform, should be very familiar to, do, to you. This is basically our standard way of initializing the perspective projection transformation. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do in our render function is to generate the WVP matrix by combining the world view and projection transformation or matrices together as usual. They are provided right here to the shader and from here on everything is the same as before. Now let's build and run this code and we can see that we can move the camera left okay so the object goes to the right and uh, we can move it right we can go forward the object is gone the cube is gone we can go backward and we can use um, plus and minus to change the speed okay so let's go down to the to the minimum speed okay so it works as expected we can also press uh, page up and go up page down to go down okay So that's it for today. As you can see, we can uh, move the camera using the keyboard, but we cannot change the direction that it is looking at, okay? So in the next tutorial, we'll learn how to control that direction using the mouse, and we will use quaternions uh, in order to calculate the rotations of the camera around the various axes. You definitely, definitely don't want to miss that. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, uh, please hit that like button for me and subscribe to my channel. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, if you haven't done this already, also please visit my website at uh, ogldev.org. You'll find uh, many more tutorials there in uh, text form. So uh, thanks for watching guys and uh, I hope to see you soon.